Matthews up against Guy Bennett. And this yeah. is a, one I'm really interested to see how it's going to play out. This is really like a new era matchup right here. You know, yeah. we're not seeing Lugia v, uh, v Star, Mu V Max, you know, these cards that we've seen for such a long time. We're seeing two newcomers, Maridon EX from Guy Bennett on the right and Chiem Pao EX, the brand new deck from Paldea Evolved on Tyler Matthews' end. Yeah, absolutely. I was saying before this, you know, these are two decks that are off meta here heading into this, you know, two decks that haven't been super heavily discussed. It's kind of like, you know, there'll probably be some people that show up and do well with it. They hit the right matchups here and there. But no, these two decks, I feel like, are uh, definitely the, the underdog. Yeah. Uh, of this tournament and to see them in a stream match is absolutely exciting here. And especially just taking a look at these deck lists, they're unique in their own right too. You know, Chien Pao, we have not seen on the stage yet, so we haven't really figured out that narrowed down version of the deck that is the best version. And Tyler Matthews could potentially bring that to our stage, so I'm very excited to see what this deck holds. Yeah, he's got some interesting things in here. He's actually got a 1-1 Intellian VMAX line in this deck. I've got to imagine that's for the Lost Box matchup. He's also playing one Shadow Rider Calyrex V, <laughs> so that he can use the Astral Barrage, spread some damage onto two benched Pokemon, Medicham yeah, V to get some Yoga Loop going, so he's got lots of plays available over on Guy yeah. Bennett's side. I think Turbo is the name of this game. He's just yeah. going to try to fly through the deck and start taking knockouts as early as possible. Yeah, I feel like Turbo is the uh, the great pair word for Maridon in general. That's just what that deck does. It hits as quickly as possible, as strong as possible, and just completely tries to overpower their opponents. And let's see if Guy Bennett is able to do that here in our stream game, our Swiss round five. I'm so excited, Chip, to get into this. Two off-meta decks that we're seeing uh, at 4-0 records here so far. I, yeah, I love it. Great start for both of these players. Here we go, getting things underway. And it looks like Guy Bennett is going to be going first. And he actually has a pretty decent starter here. That Squawk Ability EX, that Squawk and Seize ability, he'll be able to utilize in order to ditch his hand and draw a brand new one here on his opening turn. Squawk Ability, yeah, this is definitely a deck that... Um, gains a lot from Squawkabilly. Any deck that is super fast paced, that just wants to uh, throw things in the discard, gain more cards, um, especially, you know, putting cards they don't really need in the discard uh, is great. A great pair for Squawkabilly EX. I know it's Jeremy's, one of Jeremy's picks for the yep. Caster Edition. So here you go, Jeremy. We are <laughs> showcasing that beautiful Squawkabilly EX. Never did I think a Maridon and a Squawkabilly would be best friends here, but here we are. Yeah, and as Guy, I have to wonder what he thinks he's playing against. Tyler started <laughs> that Metacham V as his active oh, Pokemon, yeah. so you probably don't see that and immediately assume your opponent is playing Chien Pao Backscalibur. Nah, I, I think you'd think Urshifu, probably, you know, yeah. Rapid Strike. Urshifu is way more common to have that Metacham V out, but yeah, Guy, Guy Bennett might be in for a little surprise here after Tyler Matthews takes his first turn. We'll see how yeah. that goes. But. I have a feeling he'll be relieved when he realizes that <laughs> Yo, Tyler's true. not playing Urshifu <laughs> into his lightning deck. <laughs> yes, not the weakness, no. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that is awesome. But uh, yeah, and of course, Chen Pao, weak to um, metal. It is, Because yep. it is our ice Pokemon. So uh, yeah, no, no benefit there. But hey, we'll see how Guy is able to pull off this first turn. Of course, we're going to see that fleet footed because that Raikou is now in the active position here. Which is it's a little nice. interesting here. Guy does have his one Flaffy in his hand. He plays a 1-1 one, one line of Mareep and Flaffy. Gotcha. If he uses Squawk and Seas, he's going to have to discard it. But if he holds mm. on to this hand, oh, this is actually interesting. He's drawn Super Rod <laughs> off of his Fleet Footed, I think. So now this maybe changes things. He can use the Ultra Ball in his hand. Oh, maybe not. I was kind of thinking he might use this Ultra Ball and ditch the Flaffy. But he might not think that the Flaffy's mm. worth putting down in this matchup. When you see your opponent start a Metacham V, it's a little risky to yeah. bench something with low HP. That's true. That is very true. And that's really all Guy is going off of, just seeing a Medicham, And that's it. That's the only knowledge you currently have. And okay. But here we go. There's so, a little more eat. Yeah, and I think with this play, Guy is not going to use Squawk and Seize. He's holding on to the Flaffy in his hand. So he's probably just going to pass the turn. It's a little unfortunate he's not going to get value from this Squawk ability, especially since he started it. 
And if you see, uh, as Tyler, your opponent just pass and not use Squawk and Seize on their opening turn, you know that they're holding on to something there, good. There's something good there for sure, because that is definitely something you'd want to utilize, if not. But here we go. We're kicking off Tyler Matthews' first turn here with a Hisuian Heavy Ball. Is there a basic Pokemon in there? I see. Is that uh, Manaphy? It is the Manaphy, but that is just about it. A, couple a lot of, of bling in there. Card. Yeah, a Switch card. It looks like a rare candy. A couple ball. of Nest Ball and the Forest Seal Stone as well. Just grab the Manaphy, thin it out. Would expect to see it be discarded most likely. Not going to be super good against Guy's deck. I mean, maybe you hang on to it if you think Guy plays that Magnezone V-Star, but True, we haven't yeah. seen the Magnezone V hit the field, so no reason to really think that. Well, and that's what's interesting about both of these decks. They're still open to of player interpretation. You know, there's not really a hard <laughs> version of this deck that has just been mapped out to be the best one. I just want to say, to? I just want to say, Guy totally still thinks he's playing against Rapid Strike Urshifu because <laughs> Tyler <laughs> discarded the, the, the one one <laughs> Intellion line. So you totally, like, Guy 100% thinks, oh my gosh, they put me on stream against a fighting Yo, deck. I wish I could see Guy's face <laughs> when, like, Chen Pao comes out. Yeah, and yeah. there's like, wait, what? <laughs> Look, read in the VMAX here. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Radiant Greninja coming down onto the field here for Tyler. Yeah, now you might start to ask some yeah, questions. Yeah, you're like, wait a second. Usually the Rapid Strike deck plays that Radiant Alakazam. So if Tyler's playing Radiant Greninja, okay, maybe something's up. Maybe they're playing something spicy. Yeah. And you'll get the news here soon. Very soon indeed. Because Tyler is making his way through this original turn here. We're seeing that concealed cards into two energy here. Water energy. Still yes. probably think it's the Rapid Strike deck. Very <laughs> true. Very true. It's going to be attached here to the Medicham V into an Iono now for both players, of course. So, as we were talking about, the hands uh, Squawk ability was not used. Hand was stacked there for Guy, and now it's going to be a brand new hand, and all those cards are going to the bottom of the deck here for both players to draw into six for yeah. all six of their prize cards. And Tyler did find the Frigimax, so he was able to get that down, which is really nice, and finds that for a Seal Stone. This nice. can fetch out a battle VIP pass to keep getting set up. Maybe find another Frigibax, maybe find yourself that Chiem Pao EX. Could even retreat and get that active. But I have mm -hmm. to wonder for Tyler, what do you want in your active spot at the end of this turn? Any two prize Pokemon you have to think is at risk of being KO'd. It's probably not worth retreating into Chi and Pao, even though you would get to use that Shivery Chill ability. Yeah. It's just putting it in harm's way for maybe no reason. Yeah, that is a very good point, Chip, for sure. Yeah, I was like squinting like, what Pokemon is this? Those Altarts always throw the me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Frigibax, yeah, it's the Frigibax. I mean, very, very nice though. Tyler definitely likes the bling for sure. But yeah, that looks like it's going to be just a reset of the field there. It's passing over to Guy now on the turn. So Guy now has the information. Okay, yes. this is not an Urshifu deck. So let me try to figure out how to navigate now that I know that I'm playing against a Chen Pao deck. So let's see what Guy chooses to do here. Going to start with an attachment here onto the Raikou V after that fleet footed is utilized to d draw an additional card. He's only doing 180 oh, damage right now. What's <laughs> kind of interesting and what he might do is he could boss and hit the Chien Pao, do 180 damage to it with that Lightning Rondo, and then if Tyler does t attack into this box of disaster, he would knock out his own Chien Pao. In instead, Guy is going to choose to be aggressive here after the Frigibax. I like this play as well, but... What this hasn't done for guys, it's not set his board up anymore. He's being a little aggressive after this Frigibax and maybe recognizing, hey, if I KO a Backscalibur next turn, if my yeah. opponent is able to get one into play, that could put me pretty far ahead because with Chi and Pao EX, you do have to discard your energies every single time you attack with Hailblade. Yeah, and I think that was kind of the strategy we saw before as well in uh, our previous Chen Pao match. Uh, yeah, just debilitating your opponents, not having those um, packs caliber in play is just absolutely rough for the Chen Pao player. So we'll see what happens here. Starting off with that shivery chill here. I love that we get new abilities with these new cards to read. Always interesting names, right, Chip? Yeah, yeah, the shivery chill, adding a few more energy cards to the hand. It looks like there is an Irida in the hand for Tyler, which can guarantee the rare candy into Baxcalibur. Using nice. that Radiant Greninja first to see what he draws into. I think he does have Rare Candy. Does he have the Backscalibur is the question. I'm not sure what that alt art is that he drew I into. I know, that's what I was saying. It's so oh, I think hard it's to see it. Arvin, maybe? It's, I think it's, it's Arvin. Arvin. Yeah. It is Arvin. You are 100% correct. 
That is Arvin for sure. Irida That's will be the choice here though. Can get the back Scalibur added to the hand and also an item card here. Very nice. Yep, Irida, perfect for this deck. I mean, I love water decks. I love, I mean, I guess ice decks as well. I played a lot of um, Ice Rider Calyrex, so honestly, I'd probably play this if I was playing in this event. <laughs> no Arceus Duraludon for you? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's a tough <laughs> choice, Chip. That is a tough <laughs> choice. How are you going to throw that on me? <laughs> so All Tyler right. here probably feeling a little bit of pressure to get down mm. a second Frigibax here. Frigibax? Frigibax. I think that's probably what we're going to see. Could get another Chi Pao. But it looks like Frigibax is going to be pulled to the front. Yeah, I mean, we've just seen how critical having multiple Frigibax out are um, so that you have those the setup later game. It's just been uh, really rough if you're left with nothing on your field, uh, especially in the later game. So, yep, just going to grab that beautiful Frigibax here, take it out off of that Ultra Ball that discarded another two water energy. Now, Tyler does need a lot of energy cards in order to attack, so you might be confused. Why are we discarding all these energies if you need them? And the reason is, is because of superior energy retrieval, which yes. Tyler is holding on to in the hand currently, discarding two cards from his hand in order to fetch two cards from the discard pile back into play. Or, uh, sorry, no, up four. to four yeah, energy cards. Yep, four. Yeah, I'm thinking of the regular energy retrieval. Yeah, it just can't be the ones that you just discarded. Right. So you can't discard energy to get it back, uh, which is the only caveat here for this superior energy retrieval. But, you know, I just like the confidence in this card. It's just calling itself superior. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, That's whenever awesome. you're getting all these energies back, it definitely feels superior to that regular energy and retrieval. It, it just plays perfectly into this deck because with that Bax Caliber, you're able to just line all those energy up and take these huge knockouts with Hailblade. And that is exactly what we saw there for Tyler Matthews. Of course, that box of disaster does trigger here. That's yep. going to put 80 damage. I think it's eight damage counters. Yes, yes. On to that Chen Pao. I know, I feel like we just kind of like brushed over the box of disaster. Is that like a common card chip? Because a lot of people are playing it this weekend because of Gardevoir <laughs> yeah. specifically. If you're attacking with a Pokemon V, box of disaster was definitely a card that you considered going into this tournament. Absolutely, yeah. And Guy Bennett plays two copies of it. So we might even see another one potentially later on. So, yep, going to have that 80 damage there. Of course, Tyler Matthews taking a knockout. That's going to be two prize cards. Only four left to date to take to win this game. We're going to see a, that electric generator yeah. here on Guy Bennett's side. Massive hit of two Huge. energy cards. And the boss's order is going to bring Ooh. up Baxcalibur. This is the play. Yep. And especially because Tyler Matthews discarded a rare candy last turn with Superior. Guy knows by doing this, it's pretty hard for Tyler to have a response to this play with just a few cards in hand. Yeah, it's unfortunate because... This is the clear route that you take against Chen Pao. And unfortunately, on the stream, it has been working out for the opposing players so far. Well, I guess fortunately for that player, huh? Yeah, yeah. It depends <laughs> on who you're pulling for, right? Chen Pao or Maridon. Absolutely. All right. We'll see here what Tyler chooses to do with this turn now that Guy has taken, um, taken uh, two prize cards here in total. Starting off with the Shivery Chill, going to be able to grab two water energy cards. His only supporter option is the Arvin, so might choose to use concealed cards first. See what other supporter options he could get out of the deck. Yep. Now, I think he did prize a rare candy, and he's discarded one. He's used one, and he does only play three. So if he prized a rare candy, I don't think he can get a back Scalibur and play, and I think that's maybe what Tyler is realizing yeah, in this spot. That's what it is. Sure enough, rare candy in the prizes. He has to concede, and we're going to game two. Game two. What's ironic as well is the rare candy was at the bottom of the prize cards, but then the Hisuian Heavy Ball was played, and I think it was shuffled to the top. But uh, Tyler took two prize cards, so yes. if it was the same, would have had the rare candy, but nope. That is not how it goes. The Hisuian Heavy Ball has changed things up a bit, and we're going into a game two. I mean, are you surprised at the pace of that game? Chip, because I feel like that's pretty on par with what I yeah. expect from these decks. I don't know that, yeah, I, I don't think I would be surprised, to be honest. I mean, these are just big, basic attackers yeah. that are going to be throwing punches at each other back and forth. And we'll have to see if maybe now with Tyler most likely choosing to go first, how set up he's able to get. Can he get a few VIP pass? And uh, I will say on the other end, though, Guy Bennett is playing possibly the most aggressive deck in the format, being True. able to 
get a turn one knockout is not out of the realm of possibility. Just find an electric generator, a Raikou V, even maybe onto a Maridon as well. You got that Squawkabilly for the mm -hmm. extra card draw too. I think that Guy Bennett could definitely take a two prize knockout on his first turn. So as Tyler, what I would really try to do is put a single prize Pokemon in my active spot ending my turn. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. When you know what your opponent's deck is capable of, you just got to put a sacrificial lamb out there um, because you don't want any part of your setup to be hindered. You need that little bit of extra time to get things rolling. And unfortunately, against Maridon, that can be uh, ended real quickly, depending on how things go. Of course, we have seen Maridon decks with uh, quite significantly sometimes, but oh, usually man. the way they're built, they go quick. I got some bad news here, Boo. Uh Tyler's hand, okay, he top decked Radiant Greninja for turn. So it was Thank not looking very goodness. good. Radiant Greninja concealed cards. Okay, we're cooking now. He's got the Forest Seal <laughs> Stone, can get the VIP pass. Okay. Sigh of relief there, because this hand was not doing much for Tyler otherwise. Oof. Yeah, it is scary when that happens. Luckily, one good top deck can lead to uh, some great setup there. On. And that's awesome. Yeah, definitely getting that battle VIP pass is so important here on turn one for Tyler. So we'll see how this initial setup goes after just browsing the cards in hand so far, seeing where we should go in this first turn. And Tyler probably does want to get an energy attachment to this Intellion in the active spot. He did yeah. prize Intellion VMAX, and I don't think it's a card he wants to use in this matchup anyway, since it is a three prize Pokemon that is weak to lightning, but he does still <laughs> yeah. need to get an attachment to this active. He doesn't play any switching cards. So, uh, sorry, no, he does play two escape rope. Okay, those skip yeah, by me for a second. True. Yeah, But um, he does play two skaters park as well. So he gets an attachment to the Intellion and then can get another attachment plus the skaters park. He can retreat into something else, pop those energies back into the hand, and then just use back Scalibur to throw them back into play. Yeah, I know. Skaters park, another card that is amazing into this Chen Pao deck. Uh, fits perfectly. It allows you to get those um, energy into your hands, re-accelerate them onto the field and take those big knockouts. So you're not missing anything by having to retreat out. Of course, the Inteleon V being in play at all is always a liability now. That's just another two prize cards, unfortunately, out on the field here for Guy Bennett to take advantage of. But still, you, at least there's some positives here and there for it. We're on Guy Bennett's side for this first turn again with the squawk ability in the active here as the starter. Yeah, and the fact that Tyler started a two prize Pokemon that's weak to lightning is going to make this knockout pretty easy for Guy. He's yeah. got an electric <laughs> generator already in the hand, and he plays 16 basic lightning energy. That's right, 16. So the chances <laughs> that he hits at least one energy card off of this electric generator is very, very high. He has an attachment already lined up in the hand. He's got Squawkabilly, Squawk and Seize. He's already <laughs> got a switching card as well. Going to take a moment to check the prizes, but it feels like a turn one, two prize KO is incoming. Things are looking good for sure. And I mean, that's how this deck goes. It just lines up perfectly to take uh, early aggression as, as soon as possible, as often as possible. We see Guy Bennett, of course, going through, uh, looking at the Pokemon to bring out here off of that tandem unit on the Maridon EX as well. Two basic electric Pokemon joining us on the field. Yeah, and Guy's a little thin on his Maridon count. He's actually only playing two copies of the card. I mean, it's one of the most wow. important cards in the deck, right? But if you just get the one, it finds the other one, it finds you all your Pokemon that you really need. You really don't ever need more than two in a game, but it's just kind of risky to only play two copies, I feel like. But if you can just find one of your searching cards really early, you don't mind it too much. Here we go. This is a big electric generator, though. All right, let's see these energy. Wow, here we Double go. Hits. Always hitting it. Guy Bennett crushing it with the electric generator. Two elect er, lightning energy attached here. Yeah, and this is going to line up for that knockout. He's got an energy in hand to get accelerated somewhere else. He's got the switch cart ready. He's even got Squawk and Seize after this research. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is just perfect, honestly. I don't know that guy could have asked for a better setup. Squawk and Seize. I can't take that name. Jim. It just cracks <laughs> me up every time. <laughs> guy was debating going for the Squawk and Seize instead of the research here. Yeah. Uh, maybe wanting to try to dig for a boss, go after a Frigibax on turn yeah. one. He does play four copies of Boss's Orders. 
decided not to squawk and seize the moment, huh? <laughs> no, not at this point. <laughs> All right, here we go into an Ultra Ball here, discarding a Pokemon there and Lightning Energy into that Manaphy coming out. Yeah, pretty interesting, uh, protecting against a potential Radiant Greninja. Not something I think I would be too worried about, honestly. Well, Do you I'm really care if Tyler goes 90-90 onto two of your Pokemon? <laughs> True. Your Pokemon are pre pretty beefy there. Yeah. All right, Forest Seal Stone also getting played here for Guy Bennett. On to that Raikou V. Oh, I guess it makes sense. Oh, Guy did prize his uh, his Mareep, so that makes sense why you wouldn't want to grab that. Just get the Manaphy out. I don't know if I would have benched it. Maybe just discard it, thin it out. Yeah, I was about to say, I didn't realize it was being benched or not. It kind of looks like it could have been picked up there, but nope, it is on the bench here. We saw the uh, Squawk and Seize. Now we're going into an electric generator. Only for one. Yeah, only one <laughs> this time. Um, yeah, I think these are actually like the luckiest electric generators. I feel like every time we see Maridon, it's just... It doesn't work out for some reason. Hey, but this is the benefit of playing 16 energy cards. Yep. Your chances of hitting are just so much higher. Incredibly high indeed. All right, let's see what else Guy Bennett has, but it's just going to be a lightning rondo here on Guy Bennett's side of the field, taking two prize cards very easily, knocking out that Inteleon V, and we are over on to Tyler Matthews' side of the field. So we have Radiant Greninja and two Frigibacks right now. That Radiant Greninja is going to be promoted into the active position here. It does top deck uh, for a Seal Stone. That's not useful. Already used your V-Star power. Looks like Irida will be the supporter for turn. That is kind of the thing about this deck from Tyler. It's a lot of searching cards as opposed to just draw what we see on guys in. Guys just using research, using squawk and seize, getting through the deck, right? Tyler is more methodical with his game plan. He's trying to get things set up, find specific pieces with Pokemon, like the Backscalibur, get that rare candy set up. And Irida works so, so well in a deck like this, but mm -hmm. it's just naturally a bit slower paced than what guy's strategy is yeah. on the other end. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like almost every deck is a little bit slower paced in comparison to Maridon. It sure. is just so aggressive, uh, in, particularly in this format as well. Um, Chip, do I s keep seeing... Yeah, there's a Shadow Rider in this deck as well. Yep, uh, Shadow Rider, Calyrex V. So wow. What Tyler's trying to do with that, it's not in this matchup, but yes. against things like Lost Box. Uh, it's actually the one from the set, not this promo here. But yeah, <laughs> different <laughs> one. <laughs> against Lost Box, he can use his go. Intellium VMAX to mm -hmm. spread damage, uh, 20 damage to two Pokemon, and then use Astro Barrage, place five damage counters on two of your opponent's Pokemon. So Incredible. That just picks up a knockout on two Comfes. That's a two-prize turn. That is awesome. We Very see unique. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, I, I don't think I've seen this exact build of uh, Chen Pao, like, ever. So no, yeah, very, very unique. Definitely putting a unique build on the map for sure. We saw that concealed cards already for this turn, and we're going to see the rare candy now into that Bax Caliber. What is the engine of this energy acceleration for Tyler Matthews? And here we go. We've seen it once. Now we're seeing it again here. Superior energy retrieval. Discarding two cards to bring up to four energy out of the discard um, and back onto your field because of that Baxcalibur, bringing them out of your hand and lining up your Pokemon. Taking that knockout here on that Raikou V for Tyler Matthews going down two prize cards. Now our players are tied up. Four prize cards left to take for either of these players to take this win in our game two. Yeah, the thing about a matchup like this is it's probably just generally going to go pretty fast. <laughs> right? True. Um, going to be, you know, even if it goes to three games, it's going to, we're definitely going to finish three games here. Um, yeah. so Which Tyler, I, I like to see on the stream. Of we course, needed that. Yeah. <laughs> Tyler does, did have another energy card, and I wonder if he should have accelerated and just gotten that attachment to the Chi and Pao, because we know Guy's strategy in this matchup has been chasing down Backscalibur. Now, Guy might feel like he's far enough ahead where his best play is actually just to try to KO the Chi and Pao and then next turn take another two prize KO or yeah. just stay that far ahead. If Guy can take a prize every single turn, he will win the game from this point forward if he takes a two prize knockout this turn. Yep, that is what Guy is going to be looking to do here. We'll see what the conclusion of this turn is going to be. But there's plenty of cards in the hand currently to be working with. Ultra Ball being played right now, just deciding on what to discard here. Yeah, it has that Let's Zapdos in out. hand. It's not super good in this matchup. Maybe you could ditch that. 
Mapping out what decision to make here. Yeah, it's going to go for that Zapdos as one of the discards. Also has another Ultra Ball. Maybe you could ditch that. You've got kind of all your Pokemon set up. Mareep is pretty unlikely to, or Flaffy, I should say, is pretty unlikely <laughs> to be a factor as your Mareep is prized. So you could even discard that. Yeah, that's what the pick is going to be here for Guy. Two Pokemon going over to that Ultra Ball. Just taking a look through the deck now. Guy does play Ooh. a Lumineon. Looks like uh, he did discard yeah. it on turn one, uh, but he actually is going to grab the Radiant Serena here. Okay, that elegant heal. Normally in these Maridon decks, we've seen Radiant Greninja. What do you think about this call, putting the Serena in instead? Um, I mean, I've definitely never seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Allows you to heal 20 damage from each of your Pokemon. I guess, like, I'm trying to think what... Like Lost Box, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's got to yeah. be, right? If you already have Squawkabilly instead of Radiant Greninja, maybe Squawkabilly is enough to just get you farther ahead that the Radiant Greninja draw isn't as necessary yeah. for this build. It, it opens up a spot for you to maybe tech for other matchups. Other places, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I love both of these decks, honestly. We, we're seeing oh. peak innovation here from both of these players. Yep. Was there a, uh, oh, switch card just wasn't played? Yeah. No, he gotcha. played it and accidentally put it back in his hand. So oh, gotcha. Pretty quick okay. catch, noticed it, and looks like Tyler was able to catch it right away. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. Switch card has been played to bring this Maridon EX up into the active position here for Guy Bennett. He's got another Ultra Ball. He's thinking through if it's worth thinning anything out. I also don't believe he's played a supporter card yet this turn, so he could play this research. Ooh. Oh, and he even still has yeah, his Forest actually. Seal Stone available. <laughs> Forest Seal Stone popping off here for Guy Bennett. Has waited out on that and is going to use it okay. to grab a boss's orders here. And, uh, yeah, is going to use it this turn. As we said, there's no supporter that has been played yet, and that's going to be the boss for the Bax Caliber here. It's going to be a one prize knockout. But it is a one prize knockout, but this is, like, gone, this is so. like a board position KO. That's the reason the guy would go for a play like it's this, true, as opposed know. to just taking the two prize cards. Very true, and that's what we're going to see. One prize card down here for Guy Bennett. Only three left to take in this game, too, to be a winner and go to a 5 0 record here in our day one at NAIC. Tyler Matthews. Now, checking out the hands here. What do you see, Chip? What are we going to get done? It's a little hard to tell because everything's so shiny, to be <laughs> Yo, honest. Uh, it's so hard to I read I do see cards. an Irida, at least. So that can grow grab. Rare Candy back Scalibur. I think I see a Frigibax as well. So that has a replacement there. There is a play for Tyler to be able to win this game because Guy yeah. went for that KO on back Scalibur as opposed to taking two prizes here. Mm -hmm. Now what Tyler can do is Rare Candy into back Scalibur take a one-hit KO on this Maridon. He goes down to two prizes. He's now ahead on the prize trade. Yep. And what does Guy left to do? He, does he have to go for a boss's orders again on another back Scalibur and just hope Tyler can't take the knockout? But Ooh. Guy's board is just not set up. Uh, I mean, it's going to be really hard for Guy to piece together a KO, I think, on this next turn. Yeah, that is one thing about the Maridon deck. You know, it has so much early aggression, but it loses steam throughout the match and can be yeah. very difficult to recover uh, in the end game, and that might be just what we see. So, could have been a really sticky situation. We see a concealed cards here from Tyler to draw into two more cards. I can't tell if that card at the back of his hand is a superior energy retrieval or not. I think that's maybe the one thing he's missing here is just a few more energy cards. Is it secret rare? <laughs> it is secret rare. And there is a secret rare superior there energy is. retrieval. There is, that's what I'm saying. It so I think the reason it. Tyler went for the concealed cards is because he has Irida in hand, which can get him one of the two item cards. It can yes. get him either rare candy or superior energy retrieval. So he went for concealed cards first. Oh, but this will work. Okay, escape rope gets the Chi Pao in the active spot. The problem here is that this does leave an opening for Guy to send up a one prize Pokemon like that Ooh, Manaphy yeah. on the bench. And so... Tyler would not be taking a two-prize KO with this play. <sighs> yeah, and it, it looks like that. Oh, my gosh. Wait, are we going to see something else here, Jim? Wow, that Maridon what? EX coming into the active. I cannot say I was expecting that. I was not either. Maridon EX being promoted off of that escape I'm, road. Tyler's probably fist pumping right now. Yeah, the know, fact right? that this Internally. hit the active spot. Yeah. Absolutely. And then this, of course, Chien Pao now up in the active position, able to use that shivery chill here for Tyler as well. Wow. What a choice here, Chip. Yeah, that's something. Uh, I don't really know why Guy is yeah, valuing no hanging many, on to the Manaphy, yeah. to be honest. I, 
I don't know either. I mean, I. It's only it's only for the Radiant Greninja, right? I mean, nothing else. Hits yeah. There, I guess. What what might happen here? Okay. Here, look, here's what might be happening, right? If Guy sends up the mana fee, Tyler only has to discard two energy cards in order mm -hmm. to take the knockout. So oh, he can prepare true. his board. He can load a lot of energy cards up into play. So even if Guy does get the boss's orders KO on back Scalibur, there's already enough energy built up. So Guy is sending up the Pokemon with high HP, forcing Tyler to discard four energy cards in order mm -hmm. to get this KO. And by doing that, it means that if Guy is able to find the boss's orders to take out back Scalibur next turn, Tyler is going to need to find yet another rare candy back Scalibur. What Guy's play is doing here is he's forcing Tyler to have rare candy back Scalibur three turns in a row, which is really tough to do, especially when you're playing supporter cards like Irida every single turn to find those pieces yeah. because you're not advancing your hand, you're not playing research, you're not drawing through the deck, and you're not really using Iono either to disrupt what Guy has available. I actually like this play the more I've thought about it. Yeah, I, I love that too. And I mean, it's super heads up for sure from Guy. Um, yeah, forcing, forcing your opponent to have to put together the puzzle pieces and also forcing them to use as many resources as possible to put as many obstacles in their way and not be able to get there. That is absolutely epic here from Guy Bennett. And yeah, top, top play from our players here in the stream <laughs> today. Love to see it. That's oh, and be... the fleet-footed into the boss. Exactly what Guy wanted to draw, mm. I think. Nodding the head. Yeah, I was about to say shaking the head He's there. He's ready. Like, yeah, that's, that's very nice here. Does have the beach court. I don't think he has another switching card, so he kind of has to put that in play. I think he would like to not put beach court in play. If he didn't have to, just kind of mm. gives Tyler a free pivot. But... It might be your only option, which I think is totally fine, especially if you're getting this far ahead or getting this, you know, taking this knockout yes. on back Scalibur. Yeah, it is coming down to the wire in this game for sure. We see the Ultra Ball just failing it, so shuffling up the deck again, thinning out those two Pokemon into the discard pile as well from Guy. Still has an attachment for turn. He's going to put that onto the Raikou. And Beach Court will move into the Miraidon. Here comes Boss's orders. Here we go. Goodbye, Backscalibur, once again. Uh, Backscalibur is absolutely getting bullied today on yeah, the stream. Yeah, it has not been good for our icy friends, that is for sure. They're getting taken out left and right here, and that has been Guy Bennett's strategy this entire game and the game one as well, and it is paying off. It's really showing where this deck lacks, like just the weaknesses that it can have. Taking out those backs caliber just proves to be such an uphill battle and having yep. to put together all of the pieces becomes more and more difficult here for Tyler Matthews. And you can see Tyler's not playing Bibarel in this deck, which is something yeah. that's been pretty popular in GM Pow. And that's really something that can help smooth the draws over the fact that you're having to play a supporter like Irida every turn. It just helps you see more and more cards, and especially in a version like this for Tyler where you're playing so many clunky cards. They're tech cards for specific matchups. I mean, he's not going to be using that Shadow Rider in this matchup. Yeah, in, that's true. In very few matchups, honestly. He's not going to be <laughs> using the Metacham in a matchup like this. In Talion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, th these things are just kind of stuck in the deck. So what Tyler needs this turn, he can win. He has two prize cards remaining. What he needs is Rare Candy, Backscalibur, and Superior Energy Retrieval. Irida helps him get some of those pieces, but he needs a lot. And I think it's going to come down to what he hits off this Radiant Greninja. I don't think something like Iono is going to be enough. He's got it in his hand. Let's see what he hits off of this Metacham and Battle VIP Pass. Oh, no. That's, uh, yeah. That is not what you want, huh, Chip? Now, Guy doesn't necessarily have a super easy win lined up on the next turn. Maridon did attack. It's Photon Blaster. It cannot attack on the next turn. So Guy's going to need to have a switch cart, something like that. Oh, uh, Tyler does have the Irida. That was hiding there in the hand, but I don't think he hit everything. We'll see. We'll have to see. Yeah, like I said, I mean, it's really hard to tell sometimes what all is in the hand here for Tyler. We're not used to all these blinged out cards here, <laughs> but we love to see it on the stream. It's just we have a difficult time seeing it sometimes, but we'll see if Tyler has the pieces. Is going to get um, a Pokemon and an item card here off of that Irida. Yeah, and I think Guy's just kind of bracing himself like, okay, do you have Superior? If Tyler has a Superior Energy Retrieval in his hand, the game is over, but... Hasn't played it just yet. Uh, Doesn't look like he's got it. No. 
I do not see it, unfortunately, here. Yep, Rare Candy into the back Scalibur. That's going to be solid. And then, what, bench Spiritomb attached to the active retreat into it and pass? Oh, is yeah, that the Spiritomb play? Spiritomb is even in the stack, too. Wow. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. The Spiritomb does cut off something like a Luminion for guys, so it's actually got a pretty active use right here. And True. it also cuts off the use of Raikou's Fleet Footed, which is another way to just dig. So Tyler is going to do this. Chimpow does have two retreat, but because of the Beach Court in play, he is able to retreat it for just one single energy. And it is yeah. the pass. Yeah, that's all Tyler can do to survive this game oh, here. And Guy is so close. You can see him tapping away at his hand at the cards. He is so, so close. He's got the boss. He's got the beach court. All he needs is a switch, a switch cart, an escape rope. Any of those pieces would get him the win. He just doesn't have it. That is unfortunate here for Guy. Can taste the win here. Taste the 2-0, but yeah, it just has a bit of a clunky hand here right now. Doesn't have the switch card, unfortunately. And I think we're seeing a little bit of the downside of playing 16 Lightning Energy, <laughs> as there are three in his hand currently. Yeah, a little Free bit retreat. Of... Cannot use Fleet Footed, so no. hopefully he doesn't go for that. No, oh no. Oh, we he is going to KO the back Scalibur, though, and yep, that will mean Tyler cannot close out the game. Even though Guy does not win with that play, he goes to one prize remaining. Yes. Tyler has no way to set up another back Scalibur. And all Guy Bennett has to do is KO that big icy boy three times to get the 2-0 victory. Absolutely. Both players there knew what was going on here. But it is going to be Guy Bennett who emerges victorious with Maridon EX. And we don't see that too often. So that is awesome to see on the stream. Of course, unfortunately, Cham Pao has not been having a good time on our stream no, so far. Yeah. It's, I mean, we can see the power of this deck, right? When it pops off, when it has those turns, Rear Candy, Backscalibur, a bunch of energy, KO anything, but then your energy are gone.